Hello, welcome to Sound and Fury Book Reviews. As usual, I am Tina. Today I'm doing a book review of Shark Heart by Emily Habick. This is coming out August 8th, 2023. It's a contemporary fiction in a way <laughs> from Simon and Schuster. I stumbled across this book on NetGalley. So yes, I received this copy from there in exchange for a fair review. And the plot point in the blurb about a man turning into a shark made me both laugh and become intrigued. So I requested it, even though it's not really a genre I read that often. Uh, everybody, folks, this book is lovely. It's absolutely lovely. <laughs> A fabulous blend of genres with a great deal of heart and weirdness, Shark Heart is an utter delight. What is it about? For Lewis and Wren, their first year of marriage is also their last. A few weeks after their wedding, Lewis receives a rare diagnosis. He will retain most of his consciousness, memories, and intellect, but his physical body will gradually turn into a great white shark. As Lewis develops the features and impulses of one of the most predatory creatures in the ocean, his complicated artist heart struggles to make peace with his unfulfilled dreams. At first, Ren internally resists her husband's fate. Is there a way for them to be together after Lewis changes? Then a glimpse of Lewis's developing carnivorous nature activates long repressed memories for Ren. Then there's a whole bunch of what I'd call freaking spoilers that I'm not going to read. I don't know why. I'm sorry, publisher, for, for critiquing you here, but why you included all of those in the blurb. <laughs> so I'm not reading that part. Skip all that. In the present, all of Ren's grief eventually collides and she is forced to make an impossible choice. This book is a love story through and through, but it's also a med meditation on grief and moving on and shattered expectations. It's about finding love and losing it, and it's about how it truly is better to have love and lost it than never loved at all. It's a weird novel that's not too weird, a love story that's not a romance, and it's a magical realism, but just barely. <laughs> the fun thing about the novel is that we get no explanation for why people, it's not just Lewis, sometimes mutate into animals. In a sense, it felt like cancer in a way, but a disease with no hope of stopping it. In this way, it's not a sci-fi, as it's not based on science. It's more of a fantasy. That's why I call it kind of a magical realism. It's also a quirky novel that manages to balance serious topics such as abuse and death and lost friendship with light humor and emotion. It also has these itty bitty chapters, so I just flew through the thing. I read it so quickly. It also has chapters written as plays, which tied into the story and helped speed through the more mundane aspects of the plot. Generally, I'm not fond of reading drama, but it, it worked in this book. It made sense with Lewis's interest in theater. It, it, it actually worked in this regard. The characters were great. Ren, Lewis, and Angela are fully fleshed out individuals with goals and hopes and hobbies and dreams, all wrestling with different issues aside from and as well as the animal mutation thing. They felt realistic and relatable. I cared about all their fates and Lewis and Ren's situation was quite heartbreaking. <laughs> the writing was also lovely with passages like, their ending was one of decay, not shattering, a vague and gradual slipping away. I read an arc, so this line may be altered or removed from the final version. Just, just, just saying. In truth, I can't say much out, much else about it without going into too much spoilers. If you want something a little sad, meditative, subtle about its themes, disability is definitely in there, and nothing like the dolphin act to be episode of South Park, you should totally check it out. If I already wasn't in love with a gallery for a barbarian, and this book would definitely be a contender for my favorite book of the month, I'm definitely going to buy a paperback copy, actually, and the cover is just lovely. Over here. <laughs> Thank you so much to the publishers for the eARC and to NetGalley. I really appreciated it. Uh, yeah, so thanks for watching and uh, bye. <laughs>